I have one question for you, and I'll give you my answer a bit later. But is it ethical to change wildlife photographs from what we initially captured in camera? Drop me a comment below during the video with your opinion. I would love to hear from you. I'm not talking about altering the actual subject matter or adding in fake animals or objects. I'm merely talking about cleanups or small changes to improve a composition or to simplify an image. I have three Photoshop techniques to show you that are in question today. Distraction removal, recomposition, and background painting. Let's get onto the computer and I'll demonstrate these three techniques. So we've got these three images in Lightroom here. I'm going to remove the sticks i'm going to recompose this image and i'm going to do what i call painting the background i'm going to make the background a little bit softer so this image let's open that up in photoshop okay so the remove tool is if you click this little icon here and select remove tool it might that little icon might change depending on which tool you've selected here so i'm going to click remove tool going to come down and I'm going to get rid of these sticks. Now in the past you could use the clone tool, you could use the patch tool, spot healing tool, but now with a newer Photoshop we've got this remove tool. So you're going to want to click and basically paint over the area that you want to get rid of. So I'm going to click and paint that there and you can see Photoshop will now fill that area in with detail similar to the surrounding areas. So let's do the stick here. I'm just going to do a little bit at a time because sometimes if you do too much, Photoshop has to pull data from all over the place. And I just find that sometimes it's better just to do a little bit at a time. It makes a more accurate change for you. So you can see I'm just painting that away slowly. Let's get rid of this one here. That's pretty good there. Those sticks I'll do shortly. So basically go into your image and just paint away anything that you don't want. So I'm going to fast forward this section and I'm going to get rid of all the sticks so you don't have to be bored and watch me remove sticks all day. So that is the remove tool. I've taken away all of those sticks and that is the before and that is the after. So let's go to the next one. I'm going to show you how to recompose an image. I'm just going to throw a couple of quick adjustments on here. Nothing fancy. I haven't edited this image yet. So let's just do it like that. There's a few dust spots, but I'm going to ignore that. So what I want to do is I want to move the bird into a better area on this background so the composition is more pleasing. I basically want to drop it and move it a little bit to the left, basically a rule of thirds, and give it this right-hand space to fly into. Okay, so to start, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just double-click this to take away the lock on that layer. Then I'm going to hit Control j to make a copy of that layer. And then I'm going to come into the quick selection tool. I'm going to make a quick selection of this bird. It doesn't have to be super refined at the moment. If you want to add to the selection, just hold down shift while you click again. And I'm just going to make this selection tool a little bit smaller. Hit shift to grab that tail there. And some of this bird's beak and face. Now, this technique relies heavily on a very good subject selection. And in this video, I'm not gonna necessarily dive into that perfect subject selection technique. I'm just going to make this very rough, but I will do that in a future video. So now I'm going to create a mask for this layer. And because I've got that selected there, it's only going to allow my selection to show through on this layer. So I'll click that selection there. So now if you click off layer zero, you can see We've only got the detail coming through from this layer zero copy. So I'm just going to rename this bird and this one background. So now what we want to do is I want to get rid of the bird from this background layer. And I can do that with the subject selection. So if you hold down command on a Mac or control on a PC and you click a mask, it creates a selection for you. Now we don't want to necessarily take away that exact selection. I need to expand the selection so it goes beyond the edges of the bird. So I'm going to go select, modify, expand, probably modify that by an expansion of about 20. And you can see more of the background has been selected. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to edit, fill, and I'm going to make sure content aware is selected with 100% opacity. And now Photoshop's going to fill that area with detail that it looks for around it. I'm going to click fill. 
and it's going to get rid of that bird. So I'm going to hit Command D to get rid of the selection. Now you can see we've got a nice background there. So what's nice about this technique is I'm going to put the bird layer back on, I'm going to select it, and I'm going to just drag it and move it down. Now the problem with not making a perfectly refined selection is you can see there's some odd areas here. Now because we've got the mask, we can go in and fix those. Now with the brush, you can paint in areas that are missing. Make sure your opacity is at 100% and use a white brush on that mask. And you can go around and just fine tune that selection. Because the background is quite similar, it's a lot easier. If you have a very busy background, this technique might be very complicated to achieve. So I would restrict this technique basically to images that have a very uniform background like this. So you can move the bird around and if you wanted to, you could edit the background separately from the bird. So this is the initial composition and this is the recomposition. Okay, so this next technique also relies on a good subject selection. And I'm going to just double click that. I'm going to duplicate this layer. I'm going to grab my quick selection tool. I'm going to select the bird. Very, very quick selection here. I do advise to spend time making sure your selection is perfect, but I will show you that in a future video. And then I'm going to add this as a mask onto this layer. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a transparent layer underneath the subject layer, if you want to call it that. I'm going to hit plus here. I'm just going to click and drag and that, put that down there. So this layer I'm going to change and just call it paint. Now what you want to do is you want to take a paintbrush and this technique softens the background. The background for me is very really, uh, detailed. It's got lots of these sort of black marks and smudges on it. And I want to make it a bit more uniform. And I want to take the sort of contrast out of the background to make the subject pop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a color. And now you want to select a color that's actually in the image. So I'm going to take something like this brown here, click OK. And now with a big paintbrush, at an opacity of about 10%, I'm going to start painting onto the layer. And the reason why I use 10% is because you can add this effect very slowly. I'm going to select another color, maybe something a bit more green there. I'm going to click and paint. So you can already see how we've softened that background and made the subject pop quite a bit. Might do another one, maybe something a bit darker, maybe something like that. Click and drag. So you can see that's without that painted layer and that's with it. And the subject pops a lot more and it simplifies the image a bit more, getting rid of a lot of these darker areas. So what is my answer to the ethics question? Well, I think all three are acceptable if done in moderation. I don't find any of the techniques to be guilty of altering the reality of the subject in any way. The changes are minor enough to consider them still a true representation of what I saw when taking the photo. If you're interested in how I edited the first image of the lion, check out this video next for the full edit in Lightroom.